everyone, this is the audiobook of Great Expectation by Charles Dickens and today you are going to hear the first chapter, A Strange Place to Meet. I have lived in Kent for most of my life, but even today the marshes can still frighten me. The gathering mist would throw figures all around and strange sounds would always come out of the hazy atmosphere. It was the same that evening on Christmas Eve when I had gone to visit the graves of my parents in the churchyard on the marshes. My parents had died when I was very young, so all I knew about them was what I could read from their tombstones. I was named after my father, Philip Perrip. Since I could never pronounce it properly, I shortened it to Pip myself. That particular evening, I felt very lonely, as if I was all alone in the world, lost in the confounded mist. I started to cry. A minute later, a hoarse voice rang through the churchyard. Stop that or I'll tear you into pieces. A large man came out of nowhere. He had an evil expression on his face. He was wearing a mud-stained grey clothes. He also had an iron clamp around one of his legs. Though his whole appearance was shabby, his eyes still glared brightly at me. I was so scared at meeting this horrendous looking man in the graveyard that I could barely move. I just managed to mumble, Please spare me. Please spare me. He did not pay any heed to what I said and gabbling me by my hair, he said, Quick! What's your name and where are you from, kid? Where do you stay? Even before I could think what to say, the words started coming out of me automatically. The name's Pip, sir. My parents are down in those graves and I live with my sister, Mrs. Jo Carberry, and her husband, the village blacksmith. The information seemed to have pleased the man as he released me. You live with the blacksmith? He asked. Without waiting for an answer, he suddenly went through my pockets and discovered the small loaf of bread I carried. He pushed me on to a tombstone and started tearing into that little loaf. Once he was through, he turned to me and asked, Tell me something, boy. You know what a file is? I knew what he was talking about and therefore I just managed to nod my head. Well, it's like this. You come back tomorrow in the morning with a file and also some food to eat. I think then I shall let you live. You understand me? He inquired. I just shook my head somehow. He must have thought that I had replied in the affirmative so. He let me go. I started to run as fast as I could to get as far as I could from this strange evil man. However, another kind of fear awaited to me at home. As soon as I entered the kitchen door, my brother-in-law Joe simply looked at me and I knew what the problem was. My sister had been looking for me. Joe came to me and asked, Where have you been, Pip? Even before I could answer, the front door slammed shut and soon my sister was standing there in front of me. She was nearly 20 years older than me and was well known throughout the village for her bad temper. The minute she laid her eyes on me, she came charging in as if she wanted to tear me into two. Just as she was about to get a hold of me, Joe stepped in between us. My sister tried to get round him, but Joe was a giant. She even tried to swing around and get me, but Joe and I kept changing our directions, making it almost impossible for her to reach me. Completely exhausted, she eventually gave up trying to reach me. Joe and I exchanged sly smiles. However, my smile vanished just as a huge cannon fire sounded outside. My heart almost skipped a beat, but Joe calmed me down and told me, It's from the prison. They fire cannons to inform the people about convicts escaping. And that's the second one. We heard one yesterday too. A cold shiver ran down my spine. 
My sister shouted at us harshly to come to the table for dinner. While she was buttering Joe's slice of bread, I quietly skipped my own loaf into my pocket. Now I would at least have something to give to my convict later. I soon slipped away into my room, terrified about what would happen in the morning. It was not a pleasant night, since for a long time I could not sleep. I dreamt about horrible occurrences, such as ending up in prison because of stealing food from my sister's pantry. Eventually, a flash of lightning woke me up pretty early. I could see that it was still dark outside. I quickly, yet quietly, slipped into the pantry, careful not to disturb anyone. As Christmas was around the corner, there was a lot of food in the house. I took some more bread, some cheese, and also a pork pie, which had been kept at the back of the pantry. I guessed that my sister would not need all these things immediately. I also poured some wine into a bottle. I then slid away into Joe's workshop and chose a thick, heavy file for the convict. Quite soon, I was off toward the marches to meet my runaway convict.